setting us and loving his love reaches out to us and just it's just by his grace that um he has loved us and we will just have to clean on that grace for he died for us and he's there for us and what a faithful god we have we rest in his um in him and when you rest in him there is the fullness of joy and peace from heaven and he's faithful in every day in every way our god is faithful he's strong and he's with us always and we place him every day all the time and that's our god and when we do that then we have the peace and strength to help us in this life let us pray as we welcome pastor julia as she gives us the word for the day god this morning we are very thankful we are very thankful because of your faith faithfulness god there's none like you you meet all our needs you're there for for us god all we have to do is turn to you and you'll guide us you'll be a light on our path and um, in whatever we do you lead the way and you will be able to handle whatever brings now as we listen to the word that you have prepared for us we know you have sent the holy spirit to guide us and help us and you have blessed pastor julia with that spirit so that whatever she's got she's got for us today will be for each and every one of us whatever she talks will and reach is in every one of us according to our needs according to what we what we need this morning god you know is in every need that we have and you know is in every thing that we need and which is in every one of us needs to get closer to you and to know you more we ask you that you open our minds our hearts and our ears so that we may hear from you we may hear what you have prepared for us and we shall be forever be grateful for who you are in our lives and it's in Jesus name we pray and believe amen and amen pastor julia welcome hallelujah glory to god hallelujah powerful beautiful morning words of exhortation edification lifting up from the word of god from his throne to the heart of his people his people are you and me You know, sometimes when we think about God talking about his people, we look at those people out there and we think about the people of the days of the Bible. And we think about the people who are in the book of the Acts of the Apostles, you know, the, 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 the first the apostles that received the Holy Spirit, you know, the day of Pentecost. We think about those. We think about Paul and we think about David and we think about all the, the, all the, the, the martyrs that we know. We think about them. That's what we think when we hear about the people that God loves. Little do you ever think that those people are you and me. We are the people on the ground that our Lord cares for and is concerned about. Beautiful words of exhortation this morning, powerful ministration already, but let us go to the word of the Lord and hear what he has to say to, to, to speak to us. This morning, I feel the Lord leading us to go and just hear the word of the Lord based on a very common scripture that we all know, Don't we love when the Lord speaks to us as we have heard on scriptures that we know. We sing them all the time, we read them all the time, we hear them all the time. But let me tell you, the word of God, the, we read that the word of God is new every morning. His masses are new every morning. His love is new. Our God is not old. Even though his word was written, he's given his word. But this word is renewed. Every morning this word comes with, the, with its freshness. Every day, every day, the word, the same word we've read forever. The same promises we have had forever. But when those words are revealed through the light of the lenses of the Holy Spirit, they bring a newness. They bring a freshness. They become new to you. The same word you have read forever. And so this morning, let us go together because our time goes very fast. To Psalm 91. Psalm 91. 
When we say Psalm 91, we all know what we are going to talk about. We all know what it is all about. Psalm 91. Pretty powerful Psalm. Every time we think about Psalm 91, we hear about Psalm 91. What comes into our minds is, is kind of warfare. Psalm 91 draws to us, you know, we are seeking protection from God. It's a psalm of protection, promises of God, pretty powerful promises of God over us, over his people. But every time we think about Psalm 91, it draws into our attention, we, the people of God, when we are kind of vulnerable and now we need the head of God to come upon us, protect us, care for us, provide to us, and all that we read, the safety, the protection, which is true. That one is very true. And so whenever we are faced with things, like when there are calamities, when there are things that are beyond us, either you personally, either facing the church, facing your family, facing the nations, the communities, people tend to read this psalm. It is a psalm of protection. When you go to sleep, people tend to read this psalm when you are going to sleep. And it is true and it is good. And as in order, it is the word of God. The word of God is, 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 is very true. It's powerful to deliver. It's powerful to protect. So as you read it word by word, everything you read is true, is powerful. That is the psalm. We read it. And I have heard many people say that every time you, you want to go to sleep, sometimes, you know, we pray before. Don't even pray too much. Just get this psalm and read it as it is. It's powerful prayer before the Lord. Read it from the beginning to the end. Powerful prayer and you go and sleep. Powerful prayer, and you go and do what you are doing, and you go where you are going. But it is all true. All that is all true is all good and in order. But let us just hear the, the, what the Spirit is speaking to us through this time this morning. If we can read the whole of it, I don't think so, because we don't have much time, but we go where we can go. We just do where we can do, and we stop where we stop, and we just want to pray this morning. Psalm 91, verse 1. If you have your Bible, read it with me. Read it yourself as I read it myself. And we are all reading Psalm 91, verse number one. We shall just read us just a few verses because we can't finish. And number one says that whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. We just we can just stop there. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. That is our beginning scripture of that Psalm. Protection Psalm that we all we all read to go to sleep. We all read to go to waste warfare around us. Like now there is all what we know what's going on warfare all around the world up, upon the people of God. We are reading Psalm 91. Everyone is reading Psalm 91. Even in this situation, we are praying, remembering Israel and remembering the Middle East and all what is going on. But listen to verse number one of that scripture for you to be able to continue and go and read that, that, that Psalm. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High, he will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And we just look at the first word. I don't know which Bible, ver as, uh, Bible verse you are, uh, version you are using, but my Bible version is NIV. It says, whoever, we just stop there. The word whoever means anyone. The word, who, the word whoever means, it is a committal word. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High is a committal word. It's, co it's a committal in that it's asking for who is that? Who is that? And it says, whoever dwells. So this is a very specific psalm, people of God. This is a very intentional psalm. It's a very intentional scripture. And it goes to ask, who is that person? It's, an, it's a question. It's actually not a statement. This is a question. It's asking whoever. It's like, it's asking who is there? You know, sometimes when you knock at someone's door and you're asking, is there someone, is someone, is someone home? Is anyone home? That's what we do when we come to visit you. That's what we do. Is anyone home? And this one is asking, is anyone home this morning? Who is home this morning? Who is there this morning? Whoever dwells. And then it continues to say, so whoever talks about us, anybody who is ready to receive this revelation, who is ready to Take word by word of what this scripture is going to say. So that person, if you are one of them, if I am one of them, the Bible says, if you dwell, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High. And I thought about the word dwell. Number two, we have looked at the word whoever. It means who is home? Who is home? That is the person we are talking about. We are talking about that person. It is a very specific person. It's not everybody. Not everybody. 
It's that person who is home when someone is knocking at the door. That is the one that we are talking about, the context that this scripture has been laid on and upon. So whoever dwells, so this person that we are calling, this person that you are knocking at the door and you're asking who is home, this person dwells. This is a person who lives there. Simple definition of words this morning. This person dwells. So if someone dwells somewhere, simple. Let us define these words because we usually feel like we know words. I think I realize that we don't know the meanings of words when it comes to the lens of the Holy Spirit. This person, very simple language, lives in that home. So when you knock at the door, you are actually looking for the owner of that home. So that if they open the door, then they are the people who dwell there. They are the people who own that home. And that's why respectfully, we just don't bump into people's homes just like that. Even if it is my, if I got even to my daughter's home this morning, I'm going to get to knock at her door because that home belongs to her. It's not my home. She dwells there. That's where she lives. So when I go there, I'll have the tendency to ask. And when I'm right at the door, I'll knock and I find if she is home because that is her place, it's her dwelling. It's not my dwelling. But just the, the, the word is saying, whoever dwells now in the shelter of the Most High. So this believer who finds that their dwelling place is in the hearts of the Lord is the one we are talking about this morning. We're going to pray in a minute. And as we pray, we are going to put ourselves in the mirror of this scripture. And we see whether we qualify. We see whether we are the ones that we are being spoken of. So if this person dwells in the shelter of the Most High, then this person, whoever dwells in that home, when we, I knock at your door, there are people who live there. If I enter into that home, those people usually rest in that home. There are privileges in that home. There are privileges, there are resources in that home that those people use every day. There are things even in your home, in my home. There are things you find when you come just at the door. You get to find those things. You get to use them because they are for that home and to be used by the people who live there. For example, there's food, there is a, there's a chair you can sit on, there's going to be water, there's going to be things. So this Psalm 91 that we so read every day, it talks about that person who has found an abode in the presence in the shelter of the Lord. Whoever does in the shelter, they will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. So when you come in and you become that person who dwells in, so when they are knocking from outside, whom do they find? They find you. So you become a dweller of that home. So whoever dwells in that shelter, that person rests in the shadow of the Almighty. This is our prayer. We are going to pray this morning. Are you? Can you answer that call? If someone knocked at the door, would we be them who would answer and say, come in? Would we say, come in? Because we dwell there. Would we welcome others and say, yes, come in? Here is home. This is where we dwell. Would we welcome them? Do we qualify? Church of God, if you do, if you do qualify to be in that home, then you can be assured that you are restful under the shadow of the almighty God. And that becomes our home. That becomes our dwelling place. And we just want to pray in a minute. When I was reading, I'm going to read a few more scriptures based in the book of Psalms. And church, if this morning we are going to ask the Lord and we are going to take our responsibility, participate in this scripture to ensure and to ask that we fit to dwell in that home. There are some characteristics, there are some qualifications that will enable us to be dwellers of that home. That home is not just dwelled by anybody. Just like in your home, even if you come to my house right now, you will not find everybody here. There are only a few people in this house, even this morning as I'm talking. It's gonna be, there's just very few people in this house. These people who are in this house, they dwell here. This is what they call home. Everybody is in this home. And this is where we are. That this home that we are talking about is lived by only a few who find it, a few who find it, a few who find revelation. And when they do, they are listening in that shadow. Can we quickly go to the Psalm, Psalm 27? Psalm 27. And I think before I go to Psalm 27, I want to go to a verse that we quote all the time. Psalm 23. Psalm 23. Let me quickly, quickly go to what we know, what we read and what we know every day. Psalm 23. And we're going to finish very quickly. Psalm 23 and verse number 6. This is our memory verse. Even this prayer meeting, before we finish, we're going to pray this prayer. We pray it every day in every congregation. I hear it in every congregation. This is the prayer. Psalm 23, verse 6. Read it in your Bible as I read it in my Bible. Read it for yourself. Let me read it. Let us all read this verse now. Usually we quote it. Let us read it. It says, 
that surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, forever. And I will dwell. This is a memory verse. We know it, all of us here, because we say it every moment. But that scripture is talking about you and about me dwelling in a dwelling. There's a special dwelling that we belong to, dwelling in that place, belonging there. That is our home. That's where we live. So as we usually put this verse, just think about it. Just, just go a little bit further and think about it. It says that in that dwelling, surely your goodness and love will follow me because I dwell there already. And all the days of every day of my life, so church, I am not going to come out of this. I'm not going to defect from this dwelling. I'll live there all the days of my life. I'll live there. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Let us quickly go to verse number, chapter um, Psalm 27. Hold that scripture there, uh, to, uh, Psalm 23 and verse number 6. Hold it there. And let us go to Psalm 27 and read verse number 4. Psalm 27 verse 4. And I'll read a few verses there. Verse 4 says this, and I believe you know it, that one thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek in his temple. Powerful prayer, our powerful prayer this morning, that only one thing we pray this morning, and this is going to be our prayer, only one thing we pray this morning, that Lord, we may dwell in your presence, that we may dwell in your court, that we may dwell in your house. I know we say it every day, but let us just think about what it means for us to dwell there. If for me, I have to dwell in the house of the Lord, church, you must participate in that. The church says that I ask that I, and, and I do seek that I may dwell. So to dwell there, church, we cannot dwell in the house of the Lord when, thing, when we are still controlled by the things of this flesh. So there are things we are going to deny. There are things we are going to cast off. There are things we are going to take away to be able to dwell in the presence of the Lord. And Psalm 91 tells us very clearly that Psalm 91, which we just read, that those, whoever, whoever dwells, whoever dwells in the shelter of the most holy God, will rest. So that person, church of God, this is where we are coming. We are going to pray in a minute. If we qualify to dwell in the house of the Lord, the presence of the Lord does not take with us the things that pull us in the flesh. The presence of the Lord, living in the home of the Lord, like my home right here, there are things that usually govern this home. If you come here, if you dwell in this, there are things that you find that govern this home. If you dwell in this home, we must comply with things that govern this home and your home and every home. So that is what we are talking about. There are things that govern the dwelling of our God. Number one, these things usually are not controlled by the things of the flesh. And that's where we are. That the things that control this flesh cannot work when we go to the dwelling of the Lord. We must deny the things of the flesh so that we can live in the dwelling of the Lord. When we do, there are privileges that we shall enjoy in the presence of the Lord. So whoever dwells, in the presence of the most holy God, we'll, we'll rest in his shadow. Number one, we must be worshippers of God. We must be seekers of God. We have read in Psalm 27 and verse number four. One thing I ask from God, this one do I seek that I may dwell. I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. Church, we must contribute to dwelling in the house of the Lord. You must contribute. I must contribute to dwelling in the house of the Lord. Myself and my flesh, just as I am in human. I must contribute and deny the things of the flesh. I'm reminded of this rich young ruler that Jesus would quote in the book of somewhere in the gospel. And this rich young ruler would come and ask the Lord, Master, what can I do to be able to come and belong into your kingdom? Just paraphrasing this. And Jesus would speak to this young ruler and tell him that you must go and sell everything that you have and then you come and follow me. Go and sell everything, and then you come and follow me. Church, there are principles that govern us. Even to read Psalm 91, to receive the protection, we must be dwellers of the house of the Lord. Church, we must break free from things that govern us, 
that control us, things that rule us, things that usually speak of us louder than the word of God, and we must go and dwell in the house of the Lord. This morning, as we go to conclude, we're going to pray together and look yourself through the lens of the mirror of the Holy Spirit. And you see, if someone knocked at the door of the dwelling of the Lord, whether you would answer from the inside and say, yes, come in. Yes, here I am. If you do, Church of God, our prayer this morning is that we shall be them that will answer from the inside and we shall say, yes, come in. We shall say, yes, here I am. Because then, church, there you receive provision that we so need every day. The provision of God that we do need every day, there we find in the dwelling of our master. The love of God that we have just sung about this morning, there we find in the dwelling of the Lord. In his court is the love of God. In this court is the joy of the Lord, which we say that the joy of the Lord is my strength. When we are dwellers of the presence of the Lord, then the joy of the Lord is a component of that dwelling. We enjoy the dwelling of the Lord. When we get into the dwelling of the Lord, the protection, divine protection, we operate under divine protection. You receive protection for your family, protection for your life, protection for your resources, protection for your finances, protection for the work of your heads. Protection is a component of the dwelling of the Lord. It is found in the dwelling of the Lord. When we come into the dwelling of the Lord, the peace of God, and that's why we read in Psalm 91, and we said that we will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. We shall rest. We shall be restful. Church, we want to find how we can get and enter the dwelling of the Lord, and we live there. Our prayer this morning, church, we cannot be whoever and then still be thinking about the things that control and govern the world. We cannot be enticed to the things of the world. We have been captured by the love of God, have been captured by the dwelling of the Lord, have everything, our sufficiency is in the dwelling of the Lord. We cannot be con con contaminated, controlled, enticed by the joys of this world, the pressures of this world. They'll draw you away from this dwelling. Church, you and I have a responsibility to remain in the dwelling of the Lord. We have a responsibility. And that is why the, the, Jesus would speak to the young ruler and say that for you to follow me, you must deny self, deny the things of the world, deny, go and sell everything that you ever had and you come and you follow me, come into my dwelling so that you can dwell in the house of the Lord, dwell in the presence of the Lord. That's what we usually put in Psalm 23 verse number six, that goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life goodness and mercy shall follow me all every day of my life today today tomorrow and i shall dwell i dwell in the house of the lord where goodness and mercy are components of the house of my god of where i live this is my home i experience goodness in the home of my father i experience richness i experience the grace of god i experience the mercy the love the faithfulness or the trust of the lord i experience them in the dwelling of the lord this is where i live is the prayer we make every day when we discover the power of that prayer we pray church you and i will never be enticed by anything in that world everything that is in this world the Bible says that the world and all the things of this world will pass away, all of them, but the word of the Lord, the dwelling of the Lord will remain forever, 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 the dwelling of the Lord, that dwelling, you are the dweller of that home, you are the dweller, when we talk about that dwelling, you are the dweller of that home, and so this tells us that you shall live eternally with our God, not only shall we live eternally, even now when you are living in this body, you shall experience the peace of God. Church, do you know that we can live and we can have our trust in this God, our provision in this God? He's our provider, our protection, our peace, our victory in this God when we become dwellers. Church, may we seek to find this dwelling. May we seek to pursue and find this dwelling. This dwelling is a spiritual atmosphere. It's a spiritual dwelling that when you speak about this dwelling, as much as we know it's a visit, it's not even the church we go to. Remember, we all go to church on Sunday. We go there on Monday, on Friday, whenever we can. That is not what we are talking about. That's a place we go as a way of our flesh to comply to the dwelling that we belong to. The dwelling that we belong to lives in the inside of us. This dwelling in the inside of us 
prompts us now to go to that place of fellowship where we meet with fellow believers on Sunday, on Monday, on Friday. The, the dwelling of our God is in the inside. You are the dweller. That dwelling place, the presence of the living God is what keeps you. This morning we want to pray that we will fit and tick, tick all the boxes to be the dwellers of the presence of the living God. Church, when we do, you will speak the heavenly language. You will speak the word of the Lord. You will speak the mercy of the Lord to them that you meet. You will speak nothing but the, the, the beauty of the Lord, the greatness of our God, the faithfulness. Because when you dwell in the home, you represent that home. Even when you go out from this home, you just look like that home. That's how you look like. When you come from this home, you just look like it. We even know your address. We know where you come from. We know you because we associate you with where you come from. If you and I do relate very closely, I tend to think I know where you live. I know. You don't even have to tell me. I can associate you with your dwelling even when I'm here because you and I interact so closely. That's what we are talking about. That that dwelling, you own it, you find it. This morning, do we just want to pray this morning, church, that we'll find ourselves seated in the dwelling of the Lord. Then when you do, now read Psalm 91. With that, let us go and read Psalm 91 now. We're going to, read, to pray this prayer. We as the dwellers. So we are not leading this prayer from outside. We are reading this prayer from inside. So we are leading this prayer from the dwelling praise that is our God's dwelling praise. That is our home. You belong there. You are a child. You are a child. You are a beneficiary. You belong there. Now we can read. Church, may the Lord help us. Because when we read from inside, now this is all what we find. You, let, let, me know, let, me read, let me read this so that we can pray together. This is a prayer. We are not only reading. This is our prayer. This is our prayer this morning. So let us pray together. Take your Bible and now we are read. As I read, read from behind the scenes, from wherever you are. Now pray. This is a powerful prayer we are praying. And we are praying from inside of the dwelling home of our God. When we do, this is what we get. This is what we find. Psalm 91 verse number one. I want you, whatever we say, whoever, just put your name there. Just put your name. And then we read the rest of the, we're going to read it all the way down. But number one, whoever, just put your name and you say Julia. Julia. You who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, you will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely, when we have you, Church of God, you put your name, whenever you see you, you put your name in there. Verse 3, surely he will save me, Julia, from the flawless snare. And from the deadly pestilence, he will cover me with his feathers, and under his wings I will find refuge. Under his wings I will find refuge. His faithfulness will be my shield and my rampant. Verse 5, I will not fear the teller of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand, but it will not come near me. Verse 8, I will only observe with my eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Verse 9, if I say the Lord is my refuge and I make the most high my dwelling, no harm will overtake me. No disaster will come near my tent, for he will command his angels concerning me to guard me in all my ways. They will lift me up in their hands so that I will not strike my foot against a stone. I will tread on the lion and the cobra. I will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, the Lord says, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and I will show him my salvation. Before we finish, let me just break that psalm into two. I want to break that psalm from Psalm verse 1 up to Psalm number 13. Psalm 1, uh, verse 1 up to verse 13. That is a very personal prayer. It's your own 
personal prayer, as we have personalized it, you are praying it yourself. You are speaking those words yourself. You are declaring them before you are God. You are speaking them word by word. You are speaking them. When you do, we usually say that our God is a God who speaks. When you pray, then God answers you. Then God comes in. So you come in and you decree and you declare. You pray, you are kneeling down before God. You pray that prayer. Then from that verse, verse 14, then you finish. Verse number 13, you finish praying and then you are quiet. You are silent and then God takes over. He speaks and he answers you. And verse 14, this is what he says when he answers. Because he loves me, now God is speaking. Says the Lord, I will rescue him. So he will rescue us because we have spoken and our God takes over. Usually our God is a God who, who speaks. When we speak, he answers. So he says, I'll protect him. So he's speaking of you. He'll protect us because we have prayed. We have asked. He comes in. Church of God, this is powerful. We're going to pray this as we go out and as we come back. We're going to pray it because when we do, we know that God comes in and now he speaks to you. He speaks to your heart. And he says, I'll protect him because I had him. I had what he said. I had, I had them this morning. I had them. I had them. So he says, when you speak to God and you speak his word, God must always come and answer you. And by this prayer this morning, we speak him prophetically and we are saying this God that he says that now I'll rescue him will indeed come and rescue someone. This morning, this day of the night, he will indeed come and rescue someone. He will indeed come in your place of work, in your home. This God that you have prayed, indeed, he has ears, he hears, he has actions, he acts. And this morning, word by word, we are praying that in the name of Jesus, in our circumstances, mighty God, you are protecting us now. You are saving someone's life. You are taking someone to the refuge when they've been in circumstances in their lives, when they are mixed up confused, attacked by the enemy. Lord, you are lazing someone up. You are lifting someone up from that place of vulnerability to a place of safety that someone will discover indeed you are our refuge. You are our safety ground. You are our safe ground, Lord. You say to us and you say that surely because he loves me, I'll rescue him. Father, this morning we receive your rescue. We receive your rescue. You are rescuing someone. You are rescuing us, Lord. Lord, you are rescuing a life, Lord. They will not be destroyed. They will live. Because Lord, when you speak, your word is with finality. Your word is with power. Your word is with meaning. When you speak, my Lord, there is someone in our midst this morning who was at a verge of collapse, a verge of hopelessness, a verge where you've been mixed up. But this morning, the Lord comes and says, because he loves me, I am rescuing you. I'm rescuing someone. It's the word of Lord. I'm leading the word of God. And he says, I'll protect him for he acknowledges my name. Church, I don't know. This could be me and I believe this is me. When I have acknowledged him every day in my life, he says, uh, because he acknowledges me, I'll protect him. There is someone here who needed protection of God. Someone who didn't know which way to run, which way to go. You feel vulnerable. You feel alone. You feel you've been left in that corner. You feel you've been sidelined. You've been withdrawn from things. You've been so lost. Only. The Lord says, because you acknowledge his name, he will protect you. Protection of the Lord is in the house. Protection, divine protection to that one who dwells in the shelter of the Most High God. Protection, divine protection is a component of the house that you belong is a component of the home that you belong to. Is a component, protection, divine protection this morning from the things of this world, from the calamities of this world, from the pestilence we had that you will not fear the fries that the, the arrows that fly by day, nor the pestilence, nor the plague. Divine protection is upon you when you know and you know and you know that you dwell in the shelter of the Most High God. Protection is your component this morning in the name of Jesus. He goes on to say, he will call on me. This is God speaking. God is still speaking. We finished our talking. Now up to verse 13, we finished. Now God is talking. And he says, 
He will call on me and I'll answer him. Father, may you answer. This morning, Lord, we thank you. Father, we are receiving your voice. We're receiving your word. Upon that answer we've been waiting for. Upon that cross, Lord, we've been in to, Lord. At the cross, Lord. Father, this morning, you are releasing your guidance. You are releasing your counsel. You are releasing your instruction. You are releasing your word, Lord. Afresh to this person. Afresh to this person. Afresh to this ministry. Upon to this house of the Lord. To the body of Christ. To the church. You are releasing your instruction. Your instructions, Lord, are perfect. Your instructions are purposeful. They are intentional. They come and hit the target. And Lord, we shall know which way we shall go. In the name of Jesus, you will answer us, Lord. You say you will be with us in trouble. You are with someone this morning. The word of the Lord is coming straight upon a troubled heart. There could have been a troubled heart. I don't know which heart that one is this morning, but the word of the Lord is coming upon that troubled heart and is releasing the peace of God. The the restfulness of God. We had in verse one that that person who dwells in the shelter, who dwells in the shelter of the Lord, will rest. This person will rest in the dwelling place of our God is restfulness. Someone is receiving their restfulness this morning. You've been troubled by things that surrounding you in your family, surrounding you over your children, over your spouse, over your father, your mother, your siblings, your family far and wide. You have been troubled. So look at that troubling. The Lord is coming to give you rest this morning. The Lord is coming to say, because you acknowledge me, because you live in my shelter, this morning I am that rest that you need because you dwell in my shelter. In my shelter you find rest. In my shelter is restfulness of God. And in that family situation, today you are experiencing the restfulness of God in the name of Jesus. He says, I'll deliver him. I'll honor him. Child of God, allow me to take one more minute. There could be someone here who's been living in despair, that's been despised. You've been living in tents of shame. You've been living in tents of self-pity, tents of self-condemnation. You've been living in this tent for long. Because you prayed this prayer, now the Lord has come to answer you. Now the Lord is speaking and he says, I will deliver you and I'll honor you. I'll honor you. They despised you. The Lord will honor you. They despised you, the Lord will lift you up. They despised you. They ignored you. The Lord will lift you up. They ignored you. The Lord will raise you up. They despised you. The Lord will raise you up for himself. He will raise you up. You dwell in his shelter. You will be surprised by what what is in the what is the component of the dwelling that you belong to. The Lord he is saved. He'll honor you. If that dwelling is honor, honor is in the dwelling of him, you. And let me finish now. And he says, with long life, I'll satisfy him and I'll show him my salvation. Church, he will satisfy you with his salvation. He will honor you, satisfy you. There has, could be someone here in this altar this morning, someone who's just, just been, you know, when you're just restless, when you're just there, you feel that you're just restless. But the Lord comes to say, he will satisfy you. You know, when you're satisfied, you desire no more. When you're satisfied, you desire nothing more. The Lord speaks this morning. He says he is our satisfaction. We desire no things of this world. We desire no things that we see. The enticements of this world, we de desire no more. The Lord is speaking upon some. I believe he's speaking to me. I believe this is my prayer. Word by word is upon me this morning. We receive it, Lord. We thank you. We honor you. We adore you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we say amen and amen and amen. Back to you, Sister Zipporah, and conclude in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And we say amen and amen and amen. Thank you for that word, Pastor Julia. And that's our prayer this morning. And um, we shall be blessed the last of the week. And that's our um, psalm to meditate on and to lead again and again, just to put it in our hearts so that we know what God is in our lives. No, without further ado, we'll just say the grace and we'll meet again next Wednesday as um, God allows us. And, uh, and now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall live in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen and amen. Have a blessed day, week, day, week, everyone. Thank you. Bye.